Item 6C, adopt resolution authorizing the Crestmore Canyon Wildfire Mitigation Project in the fiscal year 2019-20 capital improvement budget and appropriating $125,000 from the Emergency Disaster Reserve Fund to initiate project planning and environmental clearance processes. City Manager. Sure. Um, Javon Grogan, City Manager. Uh, to, to the City Council, uh, members of the public, I'm standing up here today to give the City Council a presentation about the proposed Crestmore Canyon Wildfire Mitigation Project. Uh, sort of up on the title slide is my name and uh, City Attorney Mark Zaffirano. I'll be giving to, uh, today's presentation, but Mark is here. And so together we've sort of led the development of this project. And so first off, let's talk about our objectives today. Uh, we want the City Council to receive information on the proposed Crestmore Canyon wildfire mitigation project. Uh, through tonight's uh, actions, we are asking the City Council to adopt a resolution uh, formally authorizing the project uh, in the fiscal year 1920 budget uh, for our capital improvement program. Uh, we are also asking the City Council to uh, provide an additional allocation of $125,000 from the City's Emergency Disaster Reserve Fund to initiate the project planning and environmental clearance processes, uh, some of which have begun. <coughs> we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and so our agenda for to tonight's presentation, uh, it looks long, but it'll be brief. Uh, we'll give a quick background overview, or I'll give a quick background overview of the canyon. Uh, we'll talk about some recent actions that have uh, been taken to mitigate and address the issue. Uh, we'll talk about uh, pg and &E and community service hours and uh, the 2010 Crestmore explosion and how that relates to this project. Uh, we'll also talk to a, a request that uh, the city attorney, uh, with my assistance, made to Judge William Alsup. Uh, we'll t uh, then we'll uh, talk about uh, action by council and we're open for any questions. So a little bit about Crestmore Canyon, the community uh, knows of um, a lot, but just by way of background, it is the city's largest open space area. Um, there are approximately 321 homes in the Crestmore and Rollingwood uh, neighborhood that will be immediately affected by a fire in the canyon. Uh, but more specifically, there are 137 homes that surround the canyon, a school as well as um, both city and school district uh, facilities. Uh, the canyon itself is 76.6 acres. Uh, it is a very heavily wooded area uh, that has um, trails that are, are used by uh, some people in the community for exploration and hiking. Um, it contains some native trees, mainly uh, Monterey pine, California live oak, uh, but a lot of non-native uh, eucalyptus trees, as is um, uh, similar uh, in a large parts of the region. Uh, really close proximity to a lot of uh, regional uh, and arterial roads, Sneef Lane to the north, um, Skyline Boulevard to the west, San Bruno Ave to the south, uh, and 280 to the east. Um, and within a quarter mile, uh, actually less than a quarter mile, of the canyon uh, is uh, 1,200 acres of open space, uh, Sweeney Ridge, which is identified uh, as a state response area for high, uh, uh, for high fire danger. And so um, that area faces significant danger. Uh, a fire in that area uh, uh, is the responsibility of, of CAL FIRE. Uh, but here, uh, Crestmore Canyon uh, is our responsibility. Uh, as members in the community will know, uh, during the 2010 uh, PG&E gas pipeline explosion and fire, uh, a small portion of the fire actually spread into the canyon. Uh, but thankfully, uh, uh, due to some quick thinking and heroic efforts of our first responders on the scene, uh, that fire was mitigated. And uh, part of the reasons why it was mitigated is that there was some really quick thinking to call in a CAL FIRE uh, helicopter to drop fire retardant on the base of the canyon and the surrounding area. Uh, and, and that really uh, largely prevented a um, more significant devastation and, and loss of life um, uh, on that night. And so uh, we know that Crestmore Canyon is a significant fire risk to the city. Uh, and actually, um, later on tonight's agenda, uh, we have an uh, update of the Crestmore Glenview Neighborhood Reconstruction Project. Uh, but as a part of that project, uh, the $50 million that the city received from pg e to rebuild the neighborhood there was a, initially a, a vision to do wildfire mitigation in the canyon and an initial estimate of 1.9 million. Um, unfortunately, the cost to rebuild the neighborhood um, uh, was significant and, and that project could not be done. Uh, but, but even 
um, back then there was significant concerns about um, fire danger and um, um, uh, the desire to, to have a significant project to clear out some of the underbrush and vegetation. So what are some of the recent actions that uh, the city council uh, has taken? And so I, I wanted to highlight a few uh, because uh, we have been doing what we can within our resources. So um, in FY 1819, uh, the city applied for and received a $15,000 grant from the California Fire Foundation. Uh, and that work was, um, that grant was received and that work was done and it uh, cleared a lot of the underbrush around the fire road and provided better access uh, should there be a fire to that fire road. Uh, we also applied for, but unfortunately did not receive a $200,000 Cal Fire Climate Investments uh, Fire Prevention Grant uh, for hazard mitigation and vegetation clearing in the canyon. Uh, and at the beginning of this year, July of 2019, the City Council approved $37,000 for a city wild wire, wildfire hazard risk assessment to identify the level of fire risk and potential fire hazards throughout the city uh, and to develop um, an appropriate ongoing plan for uh, mitigation based on parcel density, uh, road network complexity, uh, distance to fire stations and environmental elements. And so that plan um, is nearly complete and actually uh, in the report that you have before you, there's an attachment to that really uh, shows the canyon uh, and really confirms that out of all of our fire risk areas in the city, uh, the canyon uh, is um, uh, one of the most uh, significant um, areas, uh, if not the most significant area, uh, certainly the most significant area b by land mass uh, and homes surrounding it. In addition, in the current budget, the 1920 budget, uh, uh, even though we had uh, some fiscal challenges and uh, having a balanced budget, the city council uh, uh, directed staff to include 75,000 uh, for vegetation management and fire mitigation work in the canyon. Uh, and so that is currently uh, in the budget. So what else has staff been working on? Uh, we've been working to establish uh, the project that is before you, which uh, we've titled the Crestmore Canyon Wildfire Mitigation Project. Uh, and we've been developing maps, and we'll show you one uh, really quickly, that calls for uh, up to a 100 um, foot uh, defensible uh, um, space and vegetation clearance at the 30 percent, uh, at the 30 feet from away from structures, and then the remaining 70 uh, feet to get a total of a, a 100 feet. Uh, we are working on developing cost estimates and parameters, uh, and the truth of the matter is this project will be several millions of dollars. Um, uh, and it's not just the one-time uh, money, it's the ongoing maintenance. And so it, it is uh, quite a very significant endeavor. And so we've, we've talked to contractors and uh, we um, have some meetings scheduled with CAL FIRE because they're doing a lot of vegetation uh, clearing work. Uh, we're devising a schedule and a scope of work um, uh, that will really be reflective of the amount of money that we can get into the project. Uh, we can only do what we can afford to do. Um, and we will develop uh, also an estimate for ongoing maintenance. Uh, one of the things we know uh, is that should we receive uh, revenue to uh, do significant fire mitigation, we really need to keep that up and, and, and that is extremely important. Um, and you know, if I go back, um, and, and just talk about that $100,000 grant that we applied for but didn't receive. Uh, one of the things that we know is true is that uh, it is a significant fire risk uh, to San Bruno. Uh, it is not the most significant fire risk in the state of California. And so our ability to compete for and receive grants for Crestmore Canyon on a statewide basis may be limited uh, just because of all of the uh, wildfire danger that's going on. Um, there frankly are more significant areas when we look statewide. That doesn't mean that um, the canyon is not uh, significant. And so the, the image that you have before you is a uh, image uh, of, the of the canyon with a few overlays. And so the first thing you have uh, that I wanna point out is a pink border that really shows just order of magnitude what a 30, fo 30 foot uh, buffer zone is. And what that really is is a 30 foot buffer zone uh, between structures to create that immediate area of defensible space at what we call the, the residential wildlife interface, so behind the homes and structures that surround the canyon, followed by uh, the remaining 70 uh, feet area uh, where we would attempt to do underbrush clearing, trimming limbs of the trees up to uh, six feet, really that if there is a fire, uh, hopefully to limit the spread of that fire. Um, and then the larger green area uh, throughout the rest of the canyon, uh, subject to funding, we would really hope to do uh, removal of uh, dead and diseased trees, again, clearing out uh, a lot of the um, 
areas that uh, pose fire danger, uh, that will pose access if there is a fire to getting uh, um, fire personnel and crews in the canyon, uh, not to mention all of the um, residential uh, complaints we get every year of residents saying, you know, we really should um, uh, clear out some of the falling trees. And so I want to talk uh, now a little bit about PG&E uh, and how that relates to this. And so um, as many people in the community know, uh, PG&E was sentenced to probation um, was uh, uh, the company received a criminal conviction for uh, the events surrounding uh, the 2010 uh, pipeline explosion and fire, and the company was uh, sentenced to complete 10,000 hours of community service. And that order said, um, uh, to every extent possible, uh, focused on the city of San Bruno. And so, um, not not really connected uh, initially to this effort. Um, in May of this year, uh, staff working with PG&E uh, learned that PG&E is about um, halfway done with those 10,000 hours. Um, and uh, since that time, uh, as we sit today, PG&E is about three quarters of the way done with those 10,000 court mandated hours, uh, some of which have been done in uh, San Bruno, but a significant portion, approximately 60%, uh, has been completed uh, elsewhere uh, within San Mateo County. Some for organizations that serve countywide, so San Bruno, other for organizations that um, are not directly connected to San Bruno. And so uh, city staff engaged with PG&E um, for discussions of creating a community benefit project really to dedicate those remaining community service hours uh, to the city of San Bruno, really with the goal of providing the city of San Bruno with a significant and a lasting impact and refocusing those remaining community service hours on the uh, really sort of heart of where the devastation occurred. Uh, and so those conversations happened uh, this year, uh, really launching uh, in January of, t of 2019 and concluding uh, just about a month ago uh, with uh, a agreement um, with pg e subject to court approval uh, that PG&E uh, would dedicate the balance of those community service hours to a uh, significant community benefit project in the city of San Bruno, uh, specifically for uh, the Crestmore Canyon wildfire mitigation project. And so in October of this year, uh, this month, uh, on October 8th actually, uh, there was a court hearing uh, that was attended by um, myself, the city manager, uh, the city attorney, Mark Zaffirano, and the mayor, uh, Rico Medina. Um, and at that court hearing, uh, the city um, uh, let the judge know of a conceptual um, proposal uh, that has been agreed to by the city and pg e whereby those remaining community service hours uh, would be dedicated for uh, this important community benefit project. Again, subject to um, uh, Judge Alsep's ap ap approval, who is over the probation um, uh, order and uh, potentially even uh, subject to the PG&E bankruptcy process. And so uh, th that proposal uh, was submitted to Judge Alsep and the city uh, would undertake the work. I should actually pause there to say that uh, when we initially had these discussions, um, the uh, original probation order uh, really called for PG&E to do community service work, and we initially thought that PG&E uh, could do this work directly um, uh, and undertake the work. Um, what we learned is that PG&E actually contracts out for all of their vegetation management uh, work that they're doing. There, there might even be significant liability issues for the city um, to have PG&E doing work on city property, and so the agreement was that the city would, uh, would undertake the work. Uh, some additional details. Um, so when we uh, uh, let the judge know about our conceptual proposal, what the judge really said is, where's the plan? Um, where's the detailed schedule? Where's the sco scope of work? What are the cost estimates? And so um, city staff uh, are in the process of putting that uh, all, together, all together to submit to the judge on November 12th, which is the next uh, status hearing. Uh, but it's important to note that if the $3 million is approved, uh, uh, it would uh, it could only be spent on vegetation management and fire mitigation um, in the canyon, and and that really um, uh, was sort of a clear realization um, and expression of the judge. Uh, really wanted to be sure that that money was spent on work in the canyon and not spent on the planning work and consultants, because any project of this magnitude really takes uh, some real work to get off the ground, and you have to go through the CEQA process. Uh, and the judge really wanted any significant dedication because these were um, essentially will be converted community service hours to actually go to boots on the ground, if you will. Um, 
and so any additional resources uh, would need to come from the city. Uh, it is city property. Um, and uh, additionally, it's important to note, I've said it before, but the ongoing maintenance uh, uh, we would need to find a way to uh, cover. And so we are preparing for the November uh, 12th hearing. Uh, and what we want to, um, what we have before the city council is a resolution uh, formally establishing the Crestmore Canyon wildfire mitigation project in the 1920 budget year and appropriating 125,000 from the city's emergency disaster reserve fund. I'll pause there to note that uh, the city's emergency disaster reserve fund was set up by $3 million uh, with $3 million because we face a lot of risks, risks from earthquakes, risks from fire, risks from infrastructure utility failures. Uh, and so one of the questions you may have is why are we pulling money from our emergency reserve fund to fund a capital project? Important to note that since that project was established with $3 million, uh, by pulling out 125,000, we are actually using the interest earnings uh, that have been accumulated. So right now, uh, the fund currently has about $3,182,000. Uh, and so in, important to note by this, by doing this allocation from the fund, we will not be sort of putting ourselves or the disaster fund at risk. We will essentially be leveraging the interest earnings that that fund has accumulated uh, to begin the planning and environmental clearance work because uh, should it be approved by the judge, uh, any significant work uh, will need to go through that process. Um, should the money not be approved by the judge, uh, we will plan for a project with whatever dollars that we can afford. Um, this is city property, um, and uh, it is uh, as the um, fire hazard assessment uh, that we have done, and that's included, it is um, uh, a extreme uh, fire hazard risk that we have, and so we, we need to plan for it, and this project is part of that. And so the, the 125000 uh will be combined with the 75000 that the uh, council allocated for this fiscal year, bringing the total project budget to 200000 uh, the city is planning some work um, since we did that fire. Uh, the um, since we spent the fifteen thousand last fiscal year to clear the access rules, the weeds have grown back up, and we need to go in uh, and ensure that we have access. So we're planning a project to do that. Uh, but we really would uh, like to leverage the um, money uh, in this project uh, that uh, would be allocated as initial seed funding. Uh, to fund a larger project and we'll uh, go before Judge Alsep uh, on November 12th with a full plan and scope of work um, for the project. Uh, we are here for any questions. Thank you. Anything uh, from City Attorney? You're good. Okay. Questions uh, from Council? Anything? Yeah. So, oh, more. I don't have questions, but I just, I mean, I can't express to the public, to staff, how important <coughs> that I know that the council um, believes in fire mitigation to the city. Um, we know it's an important piece and we know it's something that we need to put money towards. Um, as you can see in the presentation, it's something that we've been talking about and putting money towards for the last year. So the fact that this opportunity came up where volunteer hours really aren't going towards San Bruno is a perfect opportunity for us to actually use real money and to make sure that that money is earmarked for the fire mitigation. Um, I can't um, thank you enough for the work that you've done on this project. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Joan. Marty? Yes, um, I'm also gonna echo that. Um, service hours are great, but this money will, will save lives. And, and keeping that in, in focus, and it is something that needs to be done so I, I'm in support of this and moving forward. Thank you. And, and I just wanted to say, um, after the uh, court hearing and also the, our fire chief, uh, Dave Crest, attended, um, I did that afternoon spoke to some of the families who lost their loved ones on that night in 2010 to, of course, let them know what had transpired at the court hearing to let them know before press releases and all of that. And that is a, an establishment that the former mayor and I believe uh, is important to continue. So they hear it from us. Um, and those that I uh, w wish to discuss the topic uh, were in support of this. Um, they also believe that a, and I think some of my colleagues to the right that were there is, you know, these volunteer hours were to have been a, a value and a benefit to the community and to the city of San Bruno. And they went outside that parameter. There was not a report given, but then once it was established and seen truly what was where it was going, um, 
it is okay and it's important. Volunteer work on every level is important. But if it is about cleaning up something, if it's about painting something, these dollars that can be utilized toward that canyon is still something today that even when I went on Crestmore Drive during the street outage to speak to a couple who live on that side of the canyon are still worried today. And they were there when that explosion happened. So this is something that is really important. Um, I also want to thank staff because uh, through the manager and fire department, you had a limited time in which to bring back this proposal. We wanted this done to bring back to the judge. And as you know, um, if you've ever been before a federal judge, which I had not, it's uh, a little unique in the sense that you can't say, I'm sorry, through the chair, I want to I question you on that. Um, you just kind of be quiet, you listen, um, and you get guidance from, from the judge. I think this is something that uh, will have great value that we know is long overdue that needs to be done. So our objective and goal with the approval of council is to go back to that November 12th and work to um, have the judge feel peace of mind as well as the community's interest. I know one thing that he said that I differ with is that, you know, the city benefits, the victims don't. What I would have said, if I could, could have to the judge at that moment, but I wasn't, you're not allowed to talk unless spoken to, was, um, you know, the city was a victim. The whole city was a victim. Those folks that still worry about that still today, going on almost 10 years later, is a concern and a worry. And these are monies that I think those hours that are remaining will be better spent, better used, and save lives. So um, for me, I want to, again, thank staff for the short window that you had in which to bring this back, to bring it to council, to get us prepared for the next hearing with the judge. Um, any other questions or comments? Yes. To the chair, um, I just also want to m make a comment that staff did coordinate and we did complete the mitigation for the fire road through the canyon. And that's actually an impressive fire road. I mean, it's not just some little narrow road. I mean, it's pretty good size. And I know that the residents in the area who have seen it, who have visi vis visibility to it, has, has been very appreciative. So thank you for that, because I think that was a huge jump start on being able to get accessible vehicles in there to fight fire. <laughs> Anything else, Council? Anything to add, City Manager? All right, this is an action item. Resolution. Motion to approve the resolution, authorizing the funding. Second. second. Motion made and seconded. Council Member Davis? Aye. Council Member Medina? Aye. Council Member Salazar? Aye. Vice Mayor O'Connell? Aye. Mayor Medina? Aye. Motion carries. Okay.